Good morning, everybody. Um, I don't have any introduction. Marty's gone up uh, the coast uh, to see a shed, and um, it's me on my own. So um, I'd like to thank the Australian Men's Shed Association for hosting this event, and uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Marty and Emma for all their hard work putting this together. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay our respects to their elders, both past and present. I'd like to thank them for reminding me to pay my respects to my elders. And uh, it's going to be an interesting talk. It might not be dementia is the subject. For those of you that think you've come to hear a doctor or a medical expert, a professor on dementia, let me clear things up for you right from the start. I'm a motor mechanic and welder by trade. Similar, I know, but you know what I mean. What I bring is personal experience working with men impacted by dementia, both men with a diagnosis and those who are caring for a loved one. For over nine years with Alzheimer's Australia New South Wales, and now uh, they're now called Dementia Australia, helping sheds welcome men impacted by dementia. I'll fill you in on what we achieved in this area with regards to sheds a little later in the presentation. I was one of the carers for my father-in-law who lived with Alzheimer's for over 14 years, who being a gentleman and having two daughters and a wife with three spinal fusions, thought it best that when he wasn't at his best, that I help him shower and dress, a task I was extremely privileged to be a part of right through to his passing over seven years ago. Over the past seven years, I've seen the early signs of vascular dementia in my own father, seeing him struggle and fighting with his early signs and his slow progression. He's very frustrated about it all. The fact is, this is his story. It's his story that I would like to share with you today. But we'll get to that. First, I should put you in the picture. I can take you through all the depressing statistics as we see here on the slide about dementia. But I'm not sure that any of those statistics are going to help us at, uh, at all. I do find, however, the statistic that places females higher in dementia-related deaths telling, as I'm sure dementia doesn't discriminate. And this might show that men don't come forward about their concerns in this area and they're looked after by their partner right through until the end. So they might not get included in the data. What you, want, what you might want to know is, what is dementia? What is the difference between dementia and Alzheimer's? What are the different types of dementia? So let's tackle those questions. So what is dementia? Dementia is any disease that affects the function or, degener or degenerates brain tissue, therefore affecting brain function. And there are many diseases that do this to our brain tissue. The difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? Well, Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. So let me explain it to you this way. Dementia is an umbrella term for all the different types of dementia. Remember, there was a lot of things that affected the, the brain tissue and de degenerates the brain tissue. Each of these has its own name. Dementia is the umbrella term that covers each and every one of these points. So Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. So when I talk about types, there are four main types of dementia. Alzheimer's is the majority by far. Vascular dementia, in other words, uh, dementia that uh, affects the circulation of, of blood and allowing blood, uh, oxygen and nutrients to get to the brain. Frontal temporal dementia, that's the frontal part of the brain, uh, usually related to things like behaviours and, um, uh, you know, those things that limit us and, and stop us saying the things that we shouldn't uh, say, you know, being inappropriate and the like. So sometimes you might find people, um, Tourette's type uh, ex um, uh, comments and things coming out of people's mouths 
their frontal temporal isn't registering the yes and no's. And then there's Lewy bodies that's quite often mixed up with uh, Parkinson's and Parkinson's uh, is quite often mixed up with Lewy bodies. But it comes, uh, comes sometimes with tremors, sometimes without. And therefore it's hard to actually pinpoint exactly which one it is. But they're the four main types, Alzheimer's, vascular, frontotemporal and Lewy body types of dementia. But there are thought to be over a hundred different types of dementia and they're not all about memory. Think about all the things that your brain does. Balance, uh, telling your, your, your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe. Um, and this is how dementia becomes um, terminal uh, in, in the end. Your brain shuts down and therefore shuts down the organs that, it opera that it's operating. So in that regard, dementia doesn't necessarily have to be about memory. Who gets dementia? Well, here's a very interesting fact. You know, most people with dementia are old. That's a given. We, we, we know people in, um, uh, in aged care facilities uh, and the like. But did you know there are people as young as 4 and 11 with dementia? So that means dementia is not just an old person's disease. You may or may not get it. And we are no closer to finding its cause or its cure than we were years ago. We have, however, got a lot wiser regarding how, we, how to look after and communicate with people with dementia. And we know what hasn't worked in its treatment and management. There are so much more research that needs to be done, but what we do in the meantime is important. We had uh, a guest from the um, University of Tasmania's um, MOOC pro program on the other week, uh, and I'd like to uh, invite you to go back and have a listen to the Shed Wireless program on dementia. You see, I have a saying. You know, you know, that you don't know what you should know, if you know what, Im what I mean. Well, let me say that again. You know, you know, that you don't know what you should know, if you know what I mean. Dementia doesn't discriminate. Who in these photos has dementia? Have a look. Have a close look. These are guys in sheds all across Australia. Who in these photos has dementia? It doesn't really matter. They look just like you and me. And all of them are just like you and me. It's just that when they say they forget, it's not always going to come back to them. Like walking into a room thinking, what did I come in here for? And then if you go out, you go, oh, that's right, I wanted the screwdriver, so you go back and get it. It's not necessarily going to happen for them. The point is the four men in these pictures are participating in their local shed and it has enabled them to continue being part of community. What's uh, more important is that they are active within their sheds. They're doing welding courses, they're cutting up uh, material, they're helping keep the place clean, they're chatting to other members. And therefore, they are a part of an active and important community that basically supports them, community. So, what did I do with Alzheimer's New South Wales? Well, first of all, first of all we came up with a program called Every Bloke Needs a Shed. And two years prior to working with Alzheimer's, I'd spent uh, a couple of years working with sheds here in the Hunter Valley. Uh, setting up the Maitland Men's Shed and the Hunter Valley Cluster of Sheds, which was a new innovation, uh, bringing sheds together in a group uh, on a monthly basis to share resources, information uh, and talents between the sheds. And it, it was really good. It, it, it worked really well. So I came to the group and I said, uh, I'd like to introduce the Every Bloke Needs a Shed program for men in the early stages of dementia. And as you would well imagine, they welcomed everyone with open arms. No, they didn't. They struggled with the concept of 
bringing somebody with a disability into the shed, as a lot of sheds do. It's a difficult and hard decision about what needs to be done to allow these people to come into the shed. So there was a lot of detractors initially in the beginning of the program. It wasn't until I brought a bus of 12 guys to the local shed to have a barbecue, to be introduced, to have a bit of a chat, to um, have a look at what the guys were doing. And the guys were very warm and welcoming to invite these guys in for a visit. But what happened as soon as we turned up in that little minibus is one of my biggest detractors came running up to me and he said, they're just like us. Isn't that telling? And then the wall came down and these guys embraced these other guys, invited them in, gave them membership, made them a part. And these were active participants and members within the shed. It wasn't long after that a couple of their own members received their diagnosis. And one particular gentleman went from receiving his diagnosis to being in full-time care within a space of about four months. It was very quick and very traumatic for the shed. But what the shed had learned through the Every Bloke Needs a Shed program was what they could do, how they could communicate, and how they could react to this particular uh, gentleman that had been impacted so dramatically. And his wife really appreciated the program. So what we did from that program is we put together and we saw the need for sheds to actually have something tangible to direct them and give them information about what dementia was, what they could do, how they could look after these people within their shed. So we developed the Your Shed and Dementia, a manual. It's free on the AMSA website. I believe it's still available on Dementia Australia's website. You can download it and go through it. And please feel free if you have any questions or any thoughts or, or just want to con uh, have a conversation about maybe somebody you're concerned about within your shed, please feel free to email me, give me a call, and I'm more than happy to have a chat about your particular circumstances. But the other important group that we sort of missed at the early stages was males who care for somebody with dementia. Male carers are, wow, well, how can I put it? They are carers to the end. They took their wedding vows extremely um, to heart. In sickness and in health until death do us part. And these men will kill themselves trying. Unfortunately, what they don't do is often ask for help. They don't often ask or, or seek out information. So we generated the Recharge Your Batteries program because one of the main things that we heard from these gentlemen was that they were tired, that they were run down, that they were at their wit's end uh, looking after their loved one and they just needed some assistance about getting some rest. So we called the program Recharge Your Batteries and we took them through a four-week program two hours each day, one day each week for four weeks. The first week we talked to them about what dementia was and we discussed their particular journey and their particular partner's um, uh, diagnosis and they shared that information. And what that did is it helped them understand that they weren't alone, that there were other people that were in this predicament. The second uh, week we talked about uh, diet and exercise and how important that was to being recharged and having the, your batteries full uh, for the next event. And just by that time, each one of them were coming up to me and saying, I, I want to know this recharge your battery. How do I get more sleep? We'll get to that. 
And the third week, we actually did that. We talked about meditation. We talked about one-minute mindfulness and, and being able to take a rest when your partner was taking a rest. And that way, when your partner was up, you would be refreshed. You see, what some of these guys were doing is their partner was going to lie down and rest, and they were saying, perfect time to do the housework, perfect time to do this, that, and the other. And they were running around busier than a fart in a phone box, as the saying goes but they weren't getting enough rest themselves. One gentleman was tying a piece of cotton around his finger and tying it to his partner and um, tying it to his partner's finger so as uh, she, he would, she would wake him up halfway through the night and he was absolutely exhausted. So we went through the mindfulness program. We went and, and um, sought advice and information about how they can get some rest and some sleep. And on the fourth week, we, talk, we talked to them and introduced them to the different services that were available that would help them look after their loved one. Looking after someone like Reg. Reg is one of my participants in the program. Reg has passed away now. But I love him so much. He was, uh, he was a fat, fantastic participant. When I first met Reg, he was asleep at one end of the couch. His carer that came to look after him was asleep at the other end of the couch. This was the kind of care Reg was getting. And he wasn't getting any better. And he wasn't uh, communicating very well. He was really, really struggling. And his wife, Lorraine, was very concerned about him. I uh, offered uh, Lorraine the four-week program to introduce him to his local men's shed. And she said, well, I don't think he would be able to cope, but we'll give it a try. I'm just about to put him in to full-time care. That first visit to the men's sheds was an eye-opener for everybody. Reg came home at the end of the day, and Lorraine said, Reg has not spoken so much in all these days. He's come home and he's talked about his shed day with... Uh, Total excitement about what he did and who he saw. He couldn't remember names and he couldn't remember all the details, but it had really made his day enjoyable. He woke up the next morning and he turned to his wife and he said, is it Tuesday yet? Tuesday was the day we were taking him to the shed. You see, Reg felt a part of community when he went to visit the boys at the shed. He was a part of something that was active and ongoing. They came and collected him from his workstation and brought him into the, the, um, the crib room at morning tea and lunchtime and let him join in the stories. And in fact, a, a funny story was uh, one of the guys learnt that Reg was a cable tire on the Snowy Hydroelectric Scheme. And the guy leaned across the table and he said, Reg, I believe you were a cable tire at the hydroelectric scheme. He said, which side were you on? Now, the hydroelectric scheme built from one side of the canyon to the other side. And then they joined the, the, the dam in the middle. But Reg listened to the question and answered from his heart. He says, oh, I'm not the type of person to take sides and the whole room filled with laughter because they understood that Reg had taken the comment out of context, but he had answered it so honestly from his heart, and Reg felt like he was a king in that uh, lunchroom that day because the guys were laughing with him, not at him. Lorraine was the other person that was of great concern. Lorraine was one of the carers. And whilst the program uh, for, for, um, for male carers was uh, something fantastic, female carers also need that time out. I'd like you to think of some of the men that might come to your shed, that uh, might want to attend your shed. They might tell the same joke over and over again, and that might really get under your skin. That person might come to your shed one, maybe two days a week. And you might have to listen to that joke 
six or seven times a day. I want you to take a step back and think about the carer who brought that person to your shed. That person has had to hear that joke seven to ten times a day, 365 days a year. What can the, de uh, the shed do to support that person? The shed can take one on the chin. The shed can take a little bit of the burden and support that carer. So allowing that carer to go out and spend some time with some friends, time to go out and do some of the tasks that they need to do, time to go and have some rest. While you enjoy the company of this bloke, this mate within the shed, to come in and share the camaraderie. Remember the carers. Talk about men wanting to sleep but finding out so much more when they went through the course. They can only do that with your support. You wanted to hear Dad's story, so I thought I'd leave it to the end. My dad was a nurse in the Royal Navy. He was a medical rep for a large drunk com uh, drug company in uh, the north of England. And then he went on to years of service promoting and looking after people with leprosy and raising funds and raising awareness. I feel that life has gone full circle and I'm now in his shoes. Dad knew a thing or two about illnesses, both treatable and life-threatening. One day I was visiting his house and he was quite agitated and frustrated. He was walking up and down and he didn't know which way was up. You could tell that he was lost within his own home and he didn't know what to do. He was sure he needed to go to a meeting. He was sure he needed to go somewhere and do something but he'd forgotten what it was that he was supposed to be doing. And he was frustrated, no end. I turned to my mum and I said, how long has this been going on? And she said, a while. You see, they hadn't shared it with anybody, not even the family. I said, have we seen a doctor about this? And they both said, no, no, we know what it is. And I sat down with my dad and he says, you know, it's dementia and there is no cure for dementia. I said, well, Dad, having spent the last seven years in Dementia Australia, uh, the, uh, the Alzheimer's organisation, I said, Dad, what if it isn't dementia? And he said, what do you mean? You see, there are a ton of things that look like dementia that aren't. Have you ever been into the garden and been gardening in the hot day sun and you've been digging away and carrying on and the sweat's been pouring out of you. And all of a sudden you've stood up and your head spins. And you, whoa, hang on. I'm, I'm totally giddy. And you know the only thing that you need is a drink of water to rehydrate. Dehydration looks like dementia. But what do you need to fix dehydration? Water. Malnutrition. Dehydration. Mixed medications, taking a multitude of different things, and that includes vitamins, uh, of vitamins and, and um, supplements. Some of these things can counter, inter, uh, counter um, um, counterindicate to each other. They react against each other, so we've got to be extremely careful. Our doctors really need to know exactly what it is we've been taking both what has been prescribed and what we've been taking on the side. And this was Dad's problem. He had ordered something offline. And it was counterindicating with his heart medication and uh, other medications that he was uh, uh, taking at the time. But he didn't put two and two together. So he had, in his own mind, had made up that he had dementia. And... The reason for not going to the doctor is the doctor was busy and there are people that need that doctor more importantly than dad because, of course, dad knew exactly what was going on. Once dad went to the doctor, we took away the stuff that he'd received on the internet 
uh, the supplements that he'd been taking. And we saw him change. He was almost back to his normal self. Then we went and talked to his doctors and the doctors reduced and rejigged his medication so he wasn't taking quite so much. And again, we saw dad come back. The trouble with dad's story is that it was a long time between when this first started, when he first knew he knew that he didn't know what he should know, if you know what I mean. It was nearly two years between the start to when he actually saw a doctor. And this is the Spanner in the Works story. This is the Spanner in the Works initiative. We relate the servicing of the operator of a vehicle to the servicing of that vehicle. It's important to service the vehicle because you can change some brake pads every now and again, but if you leave it too long, the disc is going to get scarred and then you're going to have to fix not only the pads but the disc itself. Likewise, in Dad's case, Dad had left it so long that his brain had been starved of oxygen and nutrients for long enough that it had impacted his brain. He is now more back to himself than he was before but he is not totally himself because of this period of time that he let himself go. Guys, it's important that if you feel that something is not right, not only in your brain, but in your own overall general body and well-being, if you get that ache and that pain, don't shrug it off. Go and see your doctor. It's only a question. It's only a visit. And you will get and be able to receive appropriate care for whatever it is. It's the way that most cancers are picked up. Is that one-off uh, um, visit to the doctor where he sees that little spot on your skin. He detects what is happening uh, with some simple checks and then the doctor is then able to put the, the uh, things in place to look out for you. Look, guys, I've come to the end of my presentation. I really do appreciate it, uh, the, you listening and uh, the opportunity um, to do this presentation for you. Uh, I've got a question. Uh, no, it's a comment, I think, from David Clark. And David says, we look after a young man who has ADHD and he makes it a job to watch out for other members with dementia. He walks up to him and he helps him sign in and puts in uh, his lunch in the fridge. We are pro proud of both members. And this is what sheds are all about. Taking care of your mates, camaraderie uh, within the shed is so important to bring people into community. Thanks for that comment, David. I really do appreciate it. And like I said, I'd like to uh, offer you the um, ability to email me, contact me, Thank you one and all for uh, tuning in and joining me and sharing my story about it might not be dementia. Don't forget, go and see your GP, do yourself a favour. Thanks guys, take care.